And there we go. Now, please welcome Mr. Dennis Lawson. You... <laughs> okay. Don't exhaust yourselves, okay? Take it easy. Hello, oh. hello. Uh, oh, right. Comfy. I feel like I could sing a number, really. I should just... Uh, Moon River. No, okay. Um, okay, great. Lovely to see you all. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, brilliant. Well, it's great to have you here. Yeah. Finally. I'm glad I could make it. Really glad I got here. Finally. Yeah. Fantastic. So it's funny you sang a little bit right before that. Right around 76, 77, you were part of a show called Rock Follies in 70, Rock Follies. Oh, Follies, my God. Now which you're... Which I really love that show. What was it like from the transition from that right into Star? What was the, the time frame well, so like? You're talking about 75. It was a very interesting right. period for me that Rock Follies was a... Very interesting idea written by a, an American friend of mine who lives in London, and it was a six-part, half-hour musical, mm -hmm. a contemporary musical about a female rock band called Rock Follies. And um, so it was quite an unusual idea, and um, I had quite an eccentric kind of role in it. Um, I didn't sing in that one because I've sung all my life, but um, anyway, um, and 75... Um, it was around uh, in, in 1976, of course, when... Mm. Right. We did the first one of those. I began to work um, in movies. Uh, I did two movies in France that year. One was The Man in the Iron Mask, with which I have possibly the worst hairstyle in show business. <laughs> and um, uh, that was Richard Chamberlain and some yeah. fantastic people, amazing people. And Patrick McGowan. Um, and some amazing British actors. So we shot that in France. And then I did... Uh, yeah, and then I did a movie called Providence, directed by a Frenchman called Alain René, who was one of the great French movie directors. It was his first film in English, and I had the great pleasure of working with Dirk Bogard in that, and um, Sir John Gilgood, Elaine Stritch, Ellen Burstyn, and um, again, I was quite a young actor, so it was quite something for me, and we shot in Paris and Antwerp, and... Um, uh, it was fascinating, particularly to work with Dirk Bogard, who was an amazing technician, and I learned a lot from him. And we corresponded for a few years after that. And then, yeah, I came back from that to, to, to London. It was a very incredibly hot summer. There was a drought. England was brown, not green. And uh, suddenly I get this call to do this movie, um, Star Wars thing. And uh, I'd met George, oh, uh, I'd, yeah, I'd met George along with loads of other young actors in London uh, uh, probably about four months before, before I did the French movies. And, 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 and all of a sudden they wanted me to start like in days, you know. Um, and I, yeah, I said, well, sure, okay, why not, you know. Um, so uh, off we went, off we went in, in a totally unknown quantity, you know. We didn't know what we were doing. Or we didn't know what we were involved with in. Let, let me put it that way. It was quite remarkable. Did you find it overwhelming at all? Um, <laughs> in some respects, it was... Uh, well, it, not, not exactly. It was, it was great fun in as much as I was with a whole clutch of the other young actors. And I knew quite a lot of the guys, the British guys, and got to know the American side well. And... Um, what was lovely about it was a kind of, in a sense, the social aspect of it. All this, we were always hanging a, a, around, uh, waiting to do the kind of battle sequences, particularly. You know, so there was a lot of waiting around, and we'd be sitting outside because it was so hot outside the sound stage, chatting away, having a laugh. You know, and um, a lot of us began to socialise together, and um, so it was lovely. The, the the actual work itself, the um, well, let's see. Um, I, George, as, who, as far as I'm concerned, in retrospect, is some kind of genius. Um, uh, but he, at that time, he didn't really particularly understand um, how an actor might work or function. And the first big battle scene that we had to uh, record, uh, who film. Um, so the circumstances were, as I said, we were all sitting around outside the soundstage. Inside the doors of the, the scene dock doors, was this platform, and you went up this uh, you went up this this ladder onto the platform, and there was the X-wing cockpit, obviously cut away at the front, and a camera is facing you like that, and you sit in the chair, 
And I think the battle sequence was, oh, I don't know, 20 pages long, something like that. It was very involved. And George thought that I could just sit down and say my lines one after the other, totally out of context, with no cues, um, and remember what they were. And I said, George, <laughs> forget it. <laughs> we can't do that. I can't do that. So, in fact, what transpired, but I, I kind of quite liked, George sat beside the camera, as the director often does, with the script. And he'd say to me, okay, here's the, here's the first line. Let's say, for instance, for the sake of argument, um, look at the size of that thing. Okay. So, I'd go, now, there's a blue screen behind me. I don't know what that is. Nobody heard of it at that time. We didn't even know what it was. I remember hearing something about computerized camera. Who knew? I didn't know. And so, anyway, uh, George would... George would shout a line at me, <laughs> and I'd say it back. Look at the size of that thing. And then he'd say, now look up there and say it. Look at the size of that thing. Now say it, more energy. Look at the size of that thing. Okay, now slow it up. Look at this. And it, so we, what we did was, well, actually, it was a really nice way to work. Um, he, was, he was getting the material to cut for the edit. So he had lots of different options for every line, you know. As, and um, So... Um, uh, it, it was actually, in the end, quite amusing and quite fun in that, in that respect, you know. But we had, um, as I say, we had no concept of what, what we were involved in. We didn't know what was happening behind us, or, or we didn't know anything was going to happen behind us. And so yeah. when we uh, finally saw, well, I remember going to... Uh, one of the big, big cinemas in London, Leicester Square, huge, the Odeon Leicester Square at that time, a massive screen, and we sat down and watched the cast and crew screening. And that ship went across the top of the camera, you know what I'm talking about, and it was just mind-blowing. I'd never seen a shot like that. And I, also the sound was quite extraordinary, what they did with the sound. Um, you know, they they broke so much ground technically, it was quite, quite remarkable. And um, it was only when we sat and watched it, uh, it was gobsmacking uh, what they'd done with our, the material that we'd given them. You know, it was just, uh, just wonderful. So, and you know, that first movie didn't have a very big budget, I think. Um, was, it, was it seven million or less? I'm not sure. Um, and of course, it just went through the roof, you know. So, ask me something else. So, did you attend any screenings just like to see how an audience would react? Uh, yeah, I subsequently, yes, sure, I went to, did I, was there a midnight screening? I can't, yes, absolutely, we did uh, subsequently go and see it. I think probably um, at the actual opening, you know, um, and that was just extraordinary. The, the, the reaction, the audience reaction, the feedback was amazing, just amazing. So, um, yeah. Where was the opening at? I mean, where did, you know, the premiere? That, would, that was in London, that in Leicester London. Square. Oh, that was at the... that time, and quite often today too, there's a seriously large screen there with amazing sound. <clears throat> and um, that's where the premiere, well, for, for the UK, that's where it was. Sure, yeah. Well, you want to grab some questions or you have a question? I've got a question. Oh, so, no, he's got a question. So, so I know in the past we've had some folks from some of the later Star Wars movies. And they said that they only got the script pages that had their parts in it. They did not know how their character was going to be in the context of the movie, if they were going to be a minor character, if it was going to play a major role or a spoiler. Tell us about yours, your experience. Did, did you have any idea what else was going on in the movie other than your part, or were you well, just relegated to those yeah. script pages? Well, um Let's put it this way. Um, I, yes, I was in the same situation. However, I, um, one of the nice things that happened through the movies uh, was that uh, Mark Hamill and I became good friends. And uh, um, we socialized together a fair bit. He came to my house in London. It was kind of nice for him. You know, he was away from home and all that kind of stuff. And um, um, he slipped me a script. Don't tell anyone I said that. Oh, hang on, too late. Anyway, who cares? Uh, so, uh, yeah, damn, it was, um, so, uh, yeah, so, but normally, 
in the course of things, absolutely, you got your pages and that was it. And they were very careful about who got a full script. They really were. They really were. Um, anyway, there you go. It's all his fault. Well, it's not his fault. <laughs> and questions from you guys. Just raise your hand and we'll just come around and see if you guys got any questions. I one right saw a hand going up here. There's I'll one here, right here. back for you. Got it. All the way back there. Thank you for coming to Pittsburgh. Uh, great, great to see you. You know, wait, you. waited a little bit for you. But um, yeah. how does it feel that because of your portrayal of Wedge that he has become such an iconic Star Wars figure that he, you know, his, his history in like novels and comics and video games is so rich now and it's just because of your performance? It's... Um Boy, um, very, very unexpected. I, um, I still find it difficult to um, take in, in a sense. You know, like the rest of us, I was just there doing my job uh, the best I could. And um, um, I, I, it's again, I go back to that thing, we didn't know what we were involved with. And, but to sit today and to look at it, um, I, I still find it, um, it's very, very, it's lovely to get that feedback, and thank you for that. It's just lovely. But I, it's, it's totally unexpected for me. I just um, did the best I could and sat in a chair and <laughs> said the lines, you know. So um, uh, I and, and enjoyed myself, enjoyed the experience, no question. So, But it's lovely to get this back as a kind of div dividend, if you know what I mean, as this feedback. It's, it's lovely, really great, and very unexpected. Thank you. Got a question for you right here. Um, yes, do you have any memories, good or bad, of doing that movie, The Chosen or Holocaust 2000, uh, with Kirk Douglas? Holocaust with Kirk Douglas? Yeah, I, I, I wasn't it's, it's list, you're listed as being in that on IMDb. Holocaust 2000 with Kirk Douglas? No. I'm sorry, that's, that's, a, that's taking me by surprise. No, I wasn't in that. I didn't have anything to do with that. Um, I'd love to work with Kirk Douglas, so let him know. I don't know. Sorry, I, no. Yeah, it's listed on the it's inter I, um, Internet Movie Database. Well, maybe they credit. just get stuff wrong. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> Sorry, no. I think you would know. <laughs> I would know. I, if I'd worked with Mr. Douglas, I'd remember. Speaking I, of iconic actors, though, yeah. I, I doubt. Well, did you ha did you have any interactions with Peter Cushing on the set of Star Wars? I know that your character and his character weren't really in any scenes together, but I didn't know if maybe he was on set when you were filming or vice versa, if you had any interactions with Peter Cushing. Uh, no, sadly, no. Uh, no, because he, uh, he was an extraordinary a British actor. Uh, uh, um, very charismatic, very interesting. No, so I missed that one. Yeah, yeah. Him and Kirk Douglas, I mean. That's Him and Kirk, I don't understand. <laughs> Why they, anyway. I think we have a question right over here. Hello, if, I was wondering if uh, you had a lightsaber for your character, what color do you think the blade should be? Oh my God. Um, for Wedge. For Wedge. I would favor shocking pink. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Right out there. Yeah, definitely. Deal with that. <laughs> All right, we got another question right here for you. Hey, thanks for coming. Just want to know, did you get to take anything cool off the set that you keep at home now, like maybe they knew about or maybe even not know about? Ooh. And that's not loaded because I don't really know anybody else. Well, there was an actress. Oh, no, that's, sorry. That's not right. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um... Uh, the answer to that is no. Uh, you know, again, it, back then, you didn't think about stuff like that. I never thought I should keep this. Again, it's that thing of, you know, the character making an impact. I never thought about that particularly. We were just doing the best job we could. I didn't think um, I'll grab that and keep it or, you know, I'll take my orange suit home or anything and wear it to parties. You know, no, I... I no, no, sadly not. So you no. don't you don't have an X wing sitting in the back of your garden? I might have. What's it to you? <laughs> no, I don't. Do you have any of your own action figures? Do you have any of those in your? Um, yeah, I think yeah. Funny you should mention that. I think I do. I think yeah. When they, I think it's when they first came out. I went, for God's sake, what's this? <laughs> Again, it's that thing of 
what? What? What's this? It doesn't look much like me, but it'll do. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I think I've got a couple kicking about somewhere. Yeah. It's got to be yeah. surreal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, me and um, uh, Canadian actor Hayden. Uh, no. C c um, oh, bollocks. You see, I can't remember, and I worked with him. Jesus Christ. Um, Moustache. Uh, never mind. Anyway, you'll know better than I do. <laughs> All right, we got a question for you right yeah, back sure. here. It'll come to you at 2 o'clock in the morning. It'll come to me at 2 in the morning. <laughs> How did you like acting in that movie, The Machine? It was really cool to see you as the bad guy. And uh, did you have fun doing that? I certainly did. The Machine is a science fiction about um, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, really. And, um, uh, and yeah, I loved it. It was a very interesting. We shot it in Wales. Uh, he's a very interesting Welsh director, very accomplished, and his producer too. And um, we shot it in an airfield in Wales. It's, it's, um, and also, um, sorry, dang, I forget her name. Uh, a wonderful American actress played this robotic character, and she was physically extraordinary. She was a street dancer and acrobat, and a lovely actress, uh, lovely actor. And... Um, she really, she really made it, I think. And um, Toby Stevens, who played op opposite me too, is a, a pal. And um, um, uh, we had, we had a great time on that. I loved that. It was really great. I'm glad you, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a blinder. Yeah, thank you. On the set of Star Wars, how many days were you there filming? Just out of curiosity's sake. What Star Wars? I have no idea. I, I, I couldn't tell you. I mean. Weeks, months, days? It felt like weeks, but it would, um, you know, for instance, it varied on th over the three movies, naturally. And um, I, I think there'd be, you know, for, for those characters, we okay, we'd do the battle sequences, and then there'd be a break of maybe a week or ten days, and then it'd be back in for this, that, and the other. So it, it probably spread over a, a, um, a couple of months, maybe, something like that. Yeah, something like that. And then, of course, we went... Um, was it Return of the Jedi where we shot in Norway um, on, a, on ice fields? Um, and um, I remember uh, the unit, it was Irving Kirshner who directed that. Am I right about this? Okay. Irving, and um, so I do remember very distinctly when that one, um, we flew into Bergen in Norway and we got on a train and we began to go, we only went up and up and up and up and it began to snow lovely and then about half an hour an hour later the snow wasn't going like that it was going like that and then there were no trees and we were in a complete whiteout and we got to the ski lodge on the edge of the ice flows and nobody could move we were there for three days thank god there was a discotheque in the basement because we had a very good time. Uh, it was great. And um, I remember Irving, who was a lovely man. Um, we, the first day we went out into the snow to shoot, he was wearing this kind of hell, uh, hat with the big earpieces on it. And he turned to me and went, oh, here go the crazies. And off he went out the door. Um, so you see that one again, that was some, a longer uh, shoot uh, through that, that one, you know. Um, and uh, also I remember in, in a social sense that uh, both, um, um, both Mark Hamill's wife and my wife were both pregnant at that point, at the same time. So we have children who are of the of same age, you know. So, uh, so the, the, those connections didn't go away, you know. Yeah, yeah. Any more or a question right down here? I'm just curious. At the end of uh, the Rise of Skywalker, uh, was there a sadness to the final wrap, realizing that that was the last major motion picture? Yeah, I um, <clears throat> I think I think I um, I might have told you when you came to see the table, but um, with with that particular movie, uh, I was um, I was very very busy. Uh, I was doing a play in this on stage. And then I was immediately directing a play in the theater. And I got an email from J.J. Abrahams. Now, you don't get emails from J.J. Abrahams. You know, that's not how it works. Your agent calls you up and say, they're interested, la, la, la. And so I got this email, and I went, this is, um, 
I don't know if you understand the term wind up in America, but someone was um, having me on. I'm just convinced of it. So I rang my agent and said, I've got an email from somebody who says they're J.J. Abrahams. What is this? So anyway, he checked it out. He said, no, it's, it's, it's him. So I thought, okay. So I went back to him. And um, so what happened with that was that um, we, um, he said, I really want you to do this. I said, I'd love to. I said, here's my schedule, okay? And he said, we can't do it. And I said, I'll try and watch my language. I said, oh, yes, we can. <laughs> Let's, come on, come on, JJ, we can do this. So finally, uh, they wanted me for five days. Wow. And that's why it's such a brief clip, because we could only find one day that would work for both of us. Mm -hmm. So um, that was quite frustrating, but lovely to get, to step back on the set was really great. Yeah, it was lovely, really nice. Um, and kind of, uh, I suppose, uh, at the same time, but frustratingly brief, you know, you know, it was great. But uh, so, yeah, a bit of a bit of a feeling of um, the finally the end of it. And I said, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, on. another follow it up. Okay, follow up question. And last time, I think I think Anthony was here. I had talked to him. Um, and if it's too personal to answer, you know, I can respect that too. Okay, next question. But anyway, carrying on. But I, I mentioned to him, and it was after, of course, Carrie had passed away. And I just wonder if you had any relationship or, you know, any interaction with her. Uh, I know it was a sad moment. And like I said, Anthony straight looked at me. He goes, I really don't want to talk about it. You could tell him he must have been close and upset over the circumstances. Yeah, yeah. No, it's perfectly. Um, she, was, uh, she was absolutely lovely, Carrie. And... Um, I was also aware sometimes, because uh, she was pretty young when she made it, the first one, and she, I was aware that she was a bit nervous in some scenes. I remember a scene where she had to address about 20 of us pilots, you know, and that's, um, I understood it. That can be quite hard to do. You're the only one talking on a, on, on, in a movie, uh, addressing a bunch of people. There's something about that that can make you a bit jumpy, and I could tell she was pretty nervous during that shot but she was a lovely uh, person very funny well obviously great sense of humor and I had I was lucky enough to meet her again or oh, years later in LA and we went I went to a little party in her house and um, uh, she was just delightful and sharp really sharp you know she was great very sad that she had left that she that's right and her mum a few days later it was a tough one a tough one, but she was, uh, I was very fond of her. She was great, yeah. And a bit of a relation, your nephew is Ewan McGregor. Never heard of him. Oh, anyway. damn it. Uh, yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, Ewan, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, proud to say, delighted to say he's my nephew, that's right, yeah. He, he um, well, he, I think he was um, something like nine years old, and he, um, I went home, we're from a, a small town in Scotland, small town, little market town called Creef, it's a beautiful place, but um, it doesn't produce actors, you know, it just doesn't, <laughs> and uh, so Ewan was a bit eight or nine, and I was home for a few days, and my sister said, um, rather formally, she said, um, Ewan's, Ewan's got something he wants to say to you, I said, oh, okay, yeah, go on, I want to be an actor, I said, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, let's see what happens. You come back to me in 10 years, you know. <laughs> but uh, like me, because I'd wanted to do, be a performer from the age of four or five, it never went away, just never went away. And um, he was the same, you know. So um, he was, uh, yeah, he was, uh, he, he's, he's extraordinary. He's an extraordinary actor, absolutely wonderful. And, and I helped him a bit with um, his first audition speeches for drama school, you know, um, because again, when you're coming from a place like that, no one has any, um, n no one has any idea what it is you want to do. They don't get it, you know. So uh, I was able to help him a little bit with that, you know, which was great. Yeah. Super. Yeah. A few more questions. Right over here, right over there. I'll get this one. Right here. Hello. Getting back to your nephew, what's it like having like you yourself and then having him follow also in a Star Wars role? Yeah, it's great. I mean, I, um, <clears throat> I'll be honest with you, when he, when he first um, 
when he first uh, talked about doing it, uh, he was pretty young, you know, because he started very young and um, took off very fast. And I did say to him, no, just um, be careful of this. It's very easy when you're a, an actor, it's very easy to be typecast. You know what I mean? So you, somebody, you do something really well and then everybody in the indust industry goes, yeah, he does that. Oh no, he doesn't do that, he just does that. So you can get, it can, it can limit your, your experience. Um, and I think I, I just said to him, just be careful of this, you know. And, um, but luckily he ignored me completely, which is great. <laughs> and um, he does, he's done such a wonderful job, you know, fantastic. And it hasn't limited him in any way, as you can tell from his extraordinary career, you know. Yeah. Okay. So don't listen to me in the future, okay? We got a couple <laughs> questions on this side of the room. Oh, hey, uh, has anyone approached you about being part of the upcoming Rogue Squadron movie that, Rogue, that uh, Patty Jenkins is going to be directing? Upcoming? No, they bloody haven't. Well, they should. Can I just leave to make a call? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, no. No, I know. I have no expectations of that. Thanks for bringing it up, though. <laughs> All right, another question Let's right here. The middle. All right, what was your first acting role that you remember, like school play? Oh, okay, yeah, I'm glad you asked me that one. Well, you know, um, I was, um, I, I, my early influences, I'm going back to like four or five years old, were Danny Kaye, Jerry Lewis, Donald O'Connor, Gene Kelly, Astaire, um, Lucille Ball. And what I realized I was responding to when I look back on it was American vaudeville, you know, because that's where these people were coming from in a sense. And also British Music Hall. So I wanted to be a performer. Anyway, so I was five years old um, and, and uh, in my first school play. It was called Rumpelstiltskin. I don't know if you know, it's a fairy tale, Rumpelstiltskin. And I had the lead role. I was, in fact, Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> and so, um, in the story, uh, there's a point where he becomes so furiously angry, he stamps on the floor and he falls through the floor. Right? Now, in the school gym, we couldn't quite manage that. So, at the end of the piece, I got really angry and I stamped my foot on the floor and walked off the stage as fast as I could. And I got a huge laugh. And it was like a bing. Oh, I'm funny. I must be funny. And um, that was a big, big moment for me. And although you won't know it from my work in Star Wars, um, I consider myself a comic actor before anything else. I've done a lot of comedy in my career, you know. But that was a big, big moment for me. Yeah. So you feel more comfortable doing it, more natural? Um, well, I've done loads of different things, and that's what I like to do. Um, but it, yes, certainly, um, I, I, I enjoy, there's nothing like, particularly in the theater, there's nothing like making 800 people laugh for two and a half hours. It's incredible. Because you know that you're doing them good. And you're, You've got a third eye on the audience all the time, and you're, you're timing the laughs, waiting till the laughs just dipping, and you're coming in with the next line, that kind of thing. I find that incredibly satisfying. And um, I would also say it's, in, in my experience, probably the most difficult thing to do. Comedy is really hard. It's hard. Um, uh, so um, I, I was always very proud of the, 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 the comedies that I played. Um, comedy on, on camera is quite hard because guess what? There is not an audience there. So you have everybody else, everybody has to judge, is this funny? You know, there's nobody, uh, there's not 500 people sitting there laughing in a film set. So um, comedy on cameras uh, is, is quite tricky. Quite tricky, yeah. Got time for one more question. You're headed back to your table to sign? I'm going back to my table. So if you want to come and see me, be my guest. All right, let's get one more question right down here. And thanks for coming out and doing this. It's great to have you. Such a pleasure. Great to be here. Right this way. Here you go. So my question to follow up with what you were just talking about, what is your funniest Star Wars behind-the-scenes memory? Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think... Um, 
Yeah, it was probably... <laughs> it's probably Harrison Ford. Harrison is um, a very funny man. Harrison um, has a great sense of irony um, for an American. And um, I remember when I, there's, you, you'll remember a scene where I dance with the Ewoks. Remember that? And of course, big thing for me in the movies, I got to take my helmet off. So I'm getting ready for the dance with the Ewoks scene. And Harrison walked over to me and said, this is your big moment, Dennis. <laughs> he was so funny. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Very nicely done, and thanks for making it out here. It's He's pleasure. headed back Love to the table. Give it up Thank you. for Dennis Lawson. Thank you so much. So Thank nice you. to have you here. Great to be here. Thank Keep you. it going. He's still in here. Hi, this is Michael Shanks, and you're watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. The fate of the universe may depend on it. And have fun and follow your fandom.